Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Synopsys with Gordon Cooper, who's going to talk today about power and performance issues in embedded vision SOCs. So, Gordon, there's a conflict set up right from the start between the amount of data that you have to process with real-time video in, say, automotive cameras and the amount of power that you can use in order to make this work. How do you reconcile those two, two worlds? Yeah, so embedded vision processors require a lot of computational complexity, particularly with neural network accelerators. And there's a range of applications, but the trend is toward higher and higher levels of performance requirements. And as the requirements go up, there's more power required, um, whether it be power on the bus to transfer the data in or power on the multiplies. And all that has to be factored in and sort of compared with how much performance can you get, how much bandwidth uh, is required, and what is the impact of that bandwidth to an external memory on your power budget. And you think about a car, the, as cars get electrified, for example, and they're, they're putting in, what, eight, eight of these cameras in a single vehicle, you can't produce that amount of power, right? Yeah, power is a big problem in a car, and you wouldn't think so. Everybody has a, a cell phone with a battery and think, oh, I, I have to worry about my battery. And you think, oh, I've got the 12 volt in, in the car. But there are power budgets related not just to power, but also to thermal issues in the car. So yeah, the, the, the power requirements in an automotive application are significant. Why don't you draw this out for us? Great, sure. So Gordon, what are we looking at here? Right, so in a typical vision system, you basically have some frames coming in, uncompressed video frames coming in. And at the end of the day, in a neural network application, you've trained it to recognize, you trained your system to recognize, say, a pedestrian. So I have a stream of images coming in, and I want to know, is there a pedestrian in there? So the output that you want is here to say, hey, there's the pedestrian, and oh, by the way, it's a pedestrian. So how to accomplish that? Essentially, you have to have move all this data into an internal memory. And uh, most of our customers use LPDDR for, for power reasons. From the, there, you're taking chunks of those frames of images into your internal vision processor. So if this is your vision SOC, you have a vision processor, you have some internal memory and some global memory. You have to bring chunks in and process it here. Now, the vision processor is essentially a giant math engine. So you have multiplies and accumulates, and you're doing a tremendous amount of computations to get to this output. And because you have so much data, you don't want to move this from the, the camera all the way into a central computer, right? Right. And whether it's going from in a car from the edge of the car to a, a central part of the car, or whether you're going to the internet, transferring all of this video data is a significant challenge, not to mention power. So you want to process it locally, and then what you're outputting is just some, maybe some four boxes of location and, and a you know, text so what are the knobs you have to turn here? Yeah, so the interesting challenge is in, in this processor, you have uh, performance related to the number of multiplications, so or the multiply accumulates. If you increase the max, you increase the performance. But the challenge is as you increase the multiplications, you also have to feed those so you don't become go from compute bound to IO bound. So as you feed these multiplications, this bandwidth has to get bigger. Now, if you increase the size of this pipe, you increase the power because transferring data on the external bus is where a lot of the power comes from. You also have to increase the size of your LPDDRs. Not everybody wants to do that. So you have other alternatives. You increase the internal memory. Now that increases your area. So it's all these trade-offs and degrees of freedom. You have to choose between bandwidth and cost of DDR, area of internal memory in your SOC. All of these are considerations for an SOC designer in a vision application. So what are you actually measuring in order to improve both performance and lower the power? Yeah, in a vision processor, sometimes people talk about TOPS, where you have trillions of operations, tera operations per second. Now, that's a very first order um, estimate, but what you really want to know is for a, a individual graph, what is the frame rate I, I get out of that uh, graph, the performance of that specific graph, and what is the accuracy? And the accuracy is usually measured accuracy in uh, MAP. So this is critical, but also bandwidth and also it power. So you want to go from a high order estimate of tops, which, okay, is, is really, if we're honest about it, it's a multiplication of your frequency times your number of macs times two, because a mac is two operations, multiply, accumulate. Great first order, um, gives you a general idea. So one top maybe is facial detection, 10 tops maybe um, augmented reality, 30 to 100 tops might be automotive front camera. So, you know, a, a range of, of uh, performance. But these are the ones that will matter in your um, actual benchmarking. 
So what's really driving the need for more performance? Um, we see, particularly in our automotive customers, the resolution of the, the images are going up. The number of cameras in a car is going up. The frame rate requirements, maybe they were at 30 frames per second and now they want to go to, to 60 frames per second. So that's going up. And as the algorithm complexity goes up, then the amount of coefficients that need to be stored and then therefore transferred goes up. So all of this data and pixels drive the need for more performance. And you have to process this within a certain amount of time. You have a fixed budget for how long you can process, you have before you have to react as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. In a, in a real-time system, you have certain you know, frame rate requirements before the next frame of data comes in. And, and absolutely, that's uh, kind of driving. You can't just sit offline and, and process and wonder when the pedestrian is, is going to show up. So once you process this data, where does it go next? Because obviously, if you have multiple cameras facing forward, you have to be able to basically triangulate that image, right? Yeah, good question. So actually, in, in a vision processor for a neural network application, you're returning, hey, there's a pedestrian right here. Now, there's a higher level of AI processing required that says, how do I then take my multiple cameras and process those? And how do I start to figure out, I have a pedestrian, and a vision system will only tell you where there's a pedestrian. It won't tell you what happened the, the, the frame before or what they think will happen the frame after. And that's this higher level of AI. Is the pedestrian moving? Is it stationary? Are they on their phone, maybe about to step off the curb? All that's important for decision making in, um, in the car. And that probably one of, the, one of the significant reasons why we don't have autonomous vehicles yet. This is a complex problem to solve. So looping back here, if the performance uh, requirements actually increase. What happens on the Vision SOC? Yeah, so if, if all of these uh, system level issues drive performance up, then one of the simplest things to do is go and add more multiply cumulants. So make your vision processor la la larger, lots of more max. But as it turns out, that's actually the easy thing to do. Because once you have all these vision processors, you've got to feed them with more data. But once you increase the size of this pipe, you now have really driven the power up. And you probably added LPDDRs, you probably driven your costs up as well. And so there's system considerations here. Maybe to minimize this, you can increase the amount of internal memory. Now you drive the area of your SOC up. So all of these are complexities a system designer is going to have to consider. Um, you really want to spend time looking for a vision processor that sort of maximizes the, the bandwidth efficiency. And there's a lot of compression techniques out there that can be used to, to compress the data before it goes out to external memory. So really, you have to understand all of this in the context of how it's going to be used, right? Yeah, you really do. Actually, it's, it's, it's really difficult to, to take a, a slice of data here, bring it in, and maximize the use of that data so you don't have to continue to swap things out. And that's a very kind of complex thing to do that, that if you're designing your own vision processor or for us who have designed a vision processor. Where do people make mistakes when they're doing this? You know, it's a good question. I think the biggest mistake... You know, if you start with tops um, and using that as a, as a benchmark, it's, it's not as accurate as accuracy frames per second and bandwidth. So sometimes they'll start with just the frames per second and not look at the accuracy or the bandwidth, and that's going to kill you. But the other thing that's a problem is measuring accurate power in silicon, pre-silicon. So if you're designing your SOC, you don't know what the power is going to be yet. It's easy once you have the chip, go measure the power. But ahead of time, you're relying on the vendors, perhaps, to give you power estimates. And with all the computations going on, it's really hard to simulate a neural network or vision processor. It could literally take weeks to do multiple layers of a vision processor. So we, we recommend, actually, we have a Zebu emulator at Synopsys. We can actually do in a couple hours what would take a couple weeks to simulate. So looking back over this, which is a very complicated uh, subject, what do you really have to keep in mind? If I was a designer adding vision to my system, I would really want to spend a lot of time on selecting the vision processor and really looking at the accuracy and bandwidth along with the frames per second. I'd have to do some system level explorations. How much memory do I want here? How much memory here? What's the bandwidth? Um, Synopsys have tools like Platform Architect to do this virtual simulation, so that'd be important. And I'd spend a lot of time making sure I get power right. Because if you don't get that right, by the time you get the silicon out, it could be very bad if you have twice the power you thought you were going to have. And those are the most important things I'd, I'd point to. Gordon Cooper, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you very much.